Mostly like to get stuck on here, and today we're at Westminster Abbey, and then we're going to be doing our secret surprise with it. You know, no photography inside Westminster Abbey, so we didn't get to shoot, you know, kind of what we were seeing in there, but it was pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, kings and queens, uh, burial sites, and, and also tombs. they were kinged and queened here. Is that a word? Crowned. Crowned. Yeah, so we got to see the coronation. We haven't seen the coronation chair yet, but we saw the space where they do the coronations. We're about to head towards the coronation chair. Um, like, really remarkable history here. Like, you can't believe the amount of history. And then there's the poet's corner where a lot of great writers and poets and different kinds are buried, or at least there's uh, memorials to them. We saw who do see? Um, we saw Lord Byron, Charles Lord Byron. Dickens. And who's um, Lord Lewis. Byron? Lord Byron is Ada, Ada Lovelace's dad. Yeah, That's so it's a very, very Ada Lovelace uh, vacation yeah. going on. So we saw that. Yeah, Dickens and Lewis Carroll and like just re uh, you know amazing uh, the people. Shakespeare. There's he's not buried here, but there's, there's a memorial more. to him here. Um, yeah, lots of really and the architecture and the stained glass and everything is just yeah. ridiculously it's amazing. Really pretty. Right? Yeah, it's all gold and shiny. I like it. Yeah, it's <laughs> impressive. It's but it's really kind of a big graveyard. Like I'm kind of surprised. It's like the whole thing is just covered in tombs and memorials and stuff. I had no idea. Like yeah, right there, like there's you just can see. Here, I'll turn around. You can see like the the floor and the walls and like every inch of the space is just kind of turned into tombs uh, yeah. for people who have been buried here over the years. That's kind of remarkable. But we're going to continue our tour and we'll be back and shoot when we. Can. Yeah. Okay, Mommy, Westminster Abbey was kind of for you. Tell me what you thought about it. Um, I thought it was beautiful, and like Brian said, I didn't realize it was just full of memorials and tombs. Um, but it was really beautiful. I loved all the stained glass. So we're at the British Museum real quick before we go and do our thing. They don't have long, but we're going to go and check out the things they have here. Okay, so British Museum. Um, this space is one of my favorite spaces here. So, um, as much as the artwork here, I love this this open courtyard area here. It's one of my favorite things. So, I like to come here and check this out. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's shoot. So, we are in front of the Rosetta Stone, which is really cool. This is what helped everyone be able to read um, Egyptian hieroglyphics. And this is just so weird to be standing in front of the actual Rosetta Stone. So, we're in front of actual pieces of the Parthenon right here. And it's really, really cool. These are the real sculptures that were in the Parthenon. Um, and basically the British government um, took them when the Parthenon was being destroyed for their own safety and forgot to give them back. So they're here now. And the Greek government wants them back because it's part of their history. But the British government is saying no because it's a big enough part of shared history that they get to keep it in their museum. And they're kind of in an argument up right now about who gets to keep these pieces of the Parthenon. But they're here right now. Um, but it's pretty cool um, to see all these pieces from the actual Parthenon because I really of Greek mythology and stuff like that. So seeing this stuff is really interesting. Do you think they should go back to Greece or do you think they should stay here? I don't know if they should go to Greece or stay here. Like, can't you share? Can you, like, half and half it or something? Um, I don't know. I haven't decided. I don't really know if they should go back. They should go to Greece because it's their history, but they should also stay in Britain because it's easier, easily accessible by other people. So I'm not entirely sure where it should go. So tell us in the comments below what you think, whether they should go to Greece or they should stay here. Okay, so we're here at the Islington Art Factory for our secret uh, London project. Yeah. Uh, Puchan, what is that? Our secret London project is making taxidermy mice. And not just nor uh, any taxidermy mice. Wearing doll clothes. Yeah, anthropomorphized taxidermy mice and a rat. A rat and a mouse, yeah. in fact. Um, so this is something we've been looking forward to for a long time. Very excited to, to go through this process and see how bad it gets. But um, uh, it promises to be a very interesting experiment for us to, to do. This is something Presley's wanted to do for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Emily Grassley. We don't fully blame you for putting this in her head and making her want to do this. But now we're, she's living a dream and getting to do this. So let's uh, let's do some taxidermy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my first question is, where did you get interested in taxidermy, and where did you kind of find out about doing what you're doing now? Um, okay. So I never knew I was going to be a taxidermist, just like you never knew. Okay. But I think all the things I did through my life has kind of drawn me to that. Anyway, I come from South Africa. I used to live on a farm, so I did do lots of dissection and skinning of animals when I was younger. Um, but where I was really interested in is I started collecting taxidermy. And then that grew to, oh, I wonder what goes on inside it. How does it work? And then I took a class and then I got my studio and then self-taught the whole way through. Yeah, it's kind of 
like me, um, but, or, I self-taught myself, so um, that's really interesting. Um, how hard was it to teach yourself how to do taxidermy? I think it's much easier to learn from someone because then you don't mess up. So that is the hardest part, is learning by your mistakes, and it takes a lot longer to go from A to B, I think. Um, but I, I love doing this, so no, it wasn't wasted. Um, so we're at that these are ethically sourced um, mice and ethically sourced animals. Um, where do you get them from and how do you find them? Okay, so I get a range of different animals from different places. So obviously the mice that we're using today and the rats that we're using, they are snake food actually. Um, so they're from our, my local pet shop. Um, they bred to feed to snakes and then I get them from him. Um, but all the rest of the stuff, uh, obviously protected animals, you have to get paperwork for, so that you find on the side of the road kind of thing. Um, I get a lot of um, donations from breeders um, and pest control. I've made a little incision on the back and we're kind of pulling the skin back here a little bit. Um, so we can flip it inside out and get the skin ready to put on a mold. So we finished um, removing the skin and now we're going to make the molds for us to put the skin back onto so it's posed. Okay, so we're making these little um, bases that the skin will the skin will go on top of. And the skin will go on top of these little bases and then that will kind of pose it and make it have more of a shape than just a blob of skin. Oh, that's pretty good, Pooja. So that's it's your little base that is supposed to look like the real thing, and it actually does. That's a good job. Yay. Okay, so uh, we're putting the skin on top, and um, I haven't finished it yet, and it kind of looks a little bit like just the head without the arms dangling from the cheeks. It looks kind of like Clawhouser from Zootopia, and it's really funny. Um, but yeah, I'm going to finish putting this over the skin. Okay, so we're done. Um, so here's mine. I dressed it on everything, and I'm really excited about them. They both look really, really great, and I'm just really excited that I actually made this right here. So we're gonna let them dry here, and then they'll come back to us in the U.S., and we'll be able to kind of show them off to my friends. <laughs> okay, that was amazing. Yeah. Like that's like highlight of the trip. Like something not everybody does when they come <laughs> over here. Certainly, not many people can say that they've done that, and it fit Presley like to a T. <laughs> It was like exactly something she would love to do and she did love it, I think. Yeah, it's so cool. Uh, yeah, so the whole time she was just kind of saying, I can't believe this is actually happening and we're getting to do this. Uh, Tanya was phenomenal. So we're gonna put some information down in the description here um, about how you can find her if you want to do it. If you're in London already, if you visit London, you want to check it out, definitely come see Tanya and, and uh, take a class. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty awesome experience. I can't wait till they dry and come out and we get that, we have them permanently I'll be very very happy to have those things um, and so uh, yeah I might find its way into the centerpiece somehow we'll put some information out uh, so you guys can uh, check it out and and come see her and do that class we highly recommend it we'll also when we get home we'll put together a uh, little bit more a more detailed video um, with a little bit more of like the process and stuff that'll be a little grosser what we'll, probably when I edit this one together I'll keep it pretty tame because, you know, uh, not everybody's gonna wanna watch all that. But we'll, uh, we'll put something together that's a little more detailed um, and, and shows a little bit more of the process and what it looked like and what was going on in there uh, so that we'll put a dedicated video so people can avoid that one if they don't wanna see the gore, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was, actually, it was actually less gory than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, I know. You think? We didn't accidentally burst a bunch of vessels and it just got blood everywhere. I did have a nosebleed though. Yeah. There was some blood, and like you're working on this piece of paper, and as you're flipping it around and moving it around, it's bleeding from its mouth, and so it kind of draws these little patterns on the thing that are kind of really cool and intricate. It was actually kind of neat. The whole thing was just a really awesome experience. Yeah, I'm lucky. I, I'm lucky that um, I didn't come with mommy and Cooper, and they were just like, yeah. Yeah, they, no, not for the squeamish, and the, even the video that we post when we get back home that's, that goes into it more well, will not be for the squeamish. This one should be okay. I'll edit it down. I actually but. love that word so much. Squeamish. It's fun <laughs> to say. All right, so now we're going to go try and find Mommy and Cooper and go get some dinner and make our way back to the flat and do all those things. It's been a long day. I'm ready to go back. Help. <laughs>